As a matter of fact, sir, it's um, just a bag of old rubbish I was going to dump in the river. A bag of old rubbish for the river, eh? Yes, sir. Hello, here. That bag just moved. Now, what have you got in there? Well, actually, sir, it's me wife. The wife? Yeah, do you want to see a picture of her? Picture of the wife? Yeah. God bless us. I'll give you a hand. Where's the river? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Now, would this be the thief? Yes, that's him. Oh, could I ever forget that face? You recognise the face? I recognise that face anywhere. Now, what exactly did he steal? Me rotten stocking. Why are you cunning? Cunning at all? Just a minute, sir. Just huh? a moment. Ha! No, it is for a car. Yes, I know it's your car. Do you mind breathing into this? Now, come along. You're not trying. Let's have a real big breath into that. <laughs> really, sir, you must really try and blow hard. Very hard, sir, please. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Still a pleasure to be very back. well. Where have you been? I had a week in Spain. You're not allowed to go there anymore, you know? No, that was because of me. They've closed the border. <laughs> Sorry about that, viewers. <laughs> Jimmy, in this Royal Show, you're doing a bit of comparing, aren't you? Yes, second half I'm comparing. What difference is it for a man like you doing a Royal Show from any other show? Do you get more nervous and worried? Or... Oh, well, really, you know, you're very uh, aware that the Queen's in the audience, you know? It's a marvellous feeling knowing that she's watching you. You, you strike me as the sort of person who's never nervous, Jimmy. Will you be especially nervous on the big night? Oh, yes. I think everybody does. I'll get a bit of nerves. Try not to show it. And on when you're not showing it, you're the most nervous. <laughs> do you have to watch your material particularly carefully? Sure. Well, I mean, I couldn't do a gag that I could tell you. You understand what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do. I've just heard of you. There you go. Jimmy, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thank Enjoy you very much. I, I really, I'm looking forward to it very much, Trevor. Great. Thank you. Try of yours. Jimmy Tarbuck, just one of the host of top stars who'll be appearing in a... Here we go again. I always have trouble with him. In a special royal performance. Thank you, Mr. Tarbuck. You always do it, don't you? <laughs> Straight down the middle Thanks for waiting. There we go. Got all the gear. You know, I play golf. I usually play in the low 70s. If it gets any warmer than that, forget it. <laughs> Everybody's playing golf these days. That big Irish fella, Anassis, he plays. His name's all Greek to me. I'm not kidding you. He came to see me. He said, Jimmy, I want to play golf. What do I need? I said, a good set of clubs. He went out. He bought Wentworth, St. Andrews, Coomill, <laughs> Sunnydale. He didn't care. A ripple. No, it's true, everyone's playing golf. I've got a fellow who lives next door to me. He's a priest, Father John. He's a wonderful character. He played the other day, Catholic priest, with a Jewish rabbi. You can't have a Catholic rabbi, can you? No, so? <laughs> well, you never know, do you? So they're playing away, you see. And they come on the first green, and the priest has got a putt, so he goes, ping, right in. The rabbi goes, Phew. Puts and misses. Second green, there he goes again, the priest. Ping, right in. The rabbi, Phew. This goes on for 17 holes, in all the time. The rabbi says, tell me, Father, if I was to do this, would it help me putt? He said, not really, you're a bad putter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, grand audience, it's great to be on the show. I couldn't afford to be in the audience. Oh. 
But enough of this fantastic material. Can we have the microphones on, please? Come on, Ron. Got the new suit on tonight. He's a good tailor, that Cyril Lord. Yes, look at that. You're working well. <laughs> this is luxury you can afford by Cyril Lord. Get some on your head, Fred. All right, now then. <laughs> right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple who came over to this country last year, and we kind of adopted them. Please welcome Abby and Esther Offerim. Thank you, Abby and Esther. Israel's answer to Teddy Johnson and Pearl Carr. <laughs> I just thought I'd slip that in. Ba bum Well, what do you think? I'll put the good suit on now. You thought it was Tom Jones, didn't you, missus? <laughs> eh? Thought it was Tom? <laughs> eh? Da da. Don't have a go. It's an old family heirloom. On his deathbed, my granddad sold me that. <laughs> he got fooled, the old grandpa. No! It's murder back here, you know, the dressing rooms, there's so many acts on the bill. Really, I've just seen Des O'Connor in the girls' room trying his curlous hands. <laughs> Dusty Springfield's got two rooms, one for her, one for the mascara. <laughs> Wait, there is one more. I've just seen Tom Jones coming out of Danny LaRue's room saying it's not unusual. <laughs> But enough, you've seen the suit enough. The lights are fading it. Right now... <laughs> I'm due back in Burton's window at half past 11. <laughs> They've all got these in Liverpool. A pound down, a change of address. <laughs> She's waiting there, the little girl. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the turn of Sweet Charity, and it's Gretchen Weiler and her brass band. When you think of it, you know, we couldn't have the Olympic Games here this year. We couldn't give gold medals, only IOUs. <laughs> I must apologise if I look tired tonight, but I've just come back from Israel where I've been trying to raise some money for England, and... <laughs> I've been over on the Jewish television. They've got everybody you see over here. They've got over there the Flintsteins, Sadie Barnett, Popeye the Taylor Man. <laughs> They've even got a fellow who looks like Eamon Andrews. He comes on and says, my life, this is yours. <laughs> At a great hotel, it was half Jewish and half Christian. It was called the St. Cohen. It's a big sign outside, it said TV. I walked in, nothing, just a bed and a chest of drawers. Little Jewish man, I said, where's the TV? He said, you're here. Tour is welcome. <laughs> then it was time to come home. We flew home with Jewish Airlines. They don't fly like that, they fly like this. <laughs> Boom! You're now flying at 30,000 feet. I said, oh, my God. A voice said, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I sat next to a vicar. I said, will you have a drink, Reverend? He said, not just now. We're a bit too near head office. I said, oh, well. <laughs> I understand. Please yourself. I'm coming through the customs, and there's a big, stout, jolly... I don't laugh at fat ladies. She was a big, stout, jolly lady walking ahead of me. You've seen the way they walked, don't they? Vroom. 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 I said to her, do you want a bit of cheese for that roll? <laughs> The customer said, have you anything to declare? She said, no, nothing. He said, are you sure? She said, of course I'm sure. She said, I'm to take it, madam. That fur tail hanging beneath your coat is growing out of you. <laughs> she fainted. She said, quick, Aspro. I said, Aspro, with a tail like that, you're better off having a Bob Martins. <laughs> but it's great. Great to get back to London, see all the scene. The Playboy Club, that's the place to go. All those bunnies. I was only in there ten minutes. I had myxomatosis five times. <laughs> I met a very grateful lady rabbit. She came up to me then the night and said, Tarbuck. <coughs> I said, you're welcome. <laughs> Won a few quid in there. I played snap with Patrick Campbell. He was struggling. <laughs> that roulette's mad, isn't it? I sat down to have a game of that roulette here. The fellow said, you want some chips? I said, no, I've eaten. <laughs> no, no, he we play for chips. I said, stick us two bob on a cod's head. <laughs> I was coming out, there's a big Irish guy walking along. He had one foot in the gutter like that. He'd had a skin full. Been drinking ink and everything. It's like that. I said, you're drunk. He said, thank God for that. I thought I'd gone lame. <laughs> he, had to, <laughs> he had to go home through a graveyard. His wife says, Jimmy, what am I going to do with him? Every night he comes home terribly drunk like that. Came home sober, the dog bit him. <laughs> what should I do? That was in this week's Beano. He said, what should I do? I said, I'll tell you. 
as he comes through that graveyard, stick a sheet over your head and jump out at him. Frighten him out of his life. He'll never drink again. That night he came staggering. Oh. She jumped out. She went, whoa, I'm the devil. He says, shake hands. I married your sister. <laughs> You know, it is a great honour to be on the show tonight. I mean, I should be honest. I come from a family of sports, and... <laughs> my dad was a cricketer. If Rain hadn't stopped playing, I'd never have got here. <laughs> he bowled many a maiden over the old man. Good old Fred. He's a lad. I hope so. I'm not kidding you. No. I'll tell you, my mother ago, go thought I was doing this. Thinks I'm in jail. <laughs> I spent two years digging a tunnel out of Dartmoor. I was only doing six months. Man. <laughs> I've done every job. I was on the dole for five years. I went to see the dole clerk. Sorry, the uh, labour exchange. I forgot. And... <laughs> Explain that one. So anyway, I said to him, any work? He said, no work, ma'am. Try immigrating. <laughs> My skin's leaking. It's warm up here tonight. It really is. Stay still, Bob. I'll give you a shower. I'm not kidding you. I tell you, I've got this guy who lives next door to me. He's a wonderful character. His name is Father John, and he, he is a priest. And he went to see the doctor last week, and the doctor examined him. He said, well, Father John, he said, you've become a, too, a little bit too intense in your work, he said. So what I suggest is take the collar off for a week, he said, and relax. So he came down the West End. He had the time of his life. Saw things he'd never seen before. He put an ordinary suit on, collar and tie. He ended up in the Playboy Club. How can you imagine this, a priest in the play? He had that, drinking the scotch with the ice, and he's knocking it back, enjoying himself. All of a sudden, the most beautiful bunny came up and said, hi, Father John. He said, how do you recognise me? She said, I'm Sister Maria, I go to the same doctor. <laughs> Thank you. I always eat them, they're so cheap, you see, yes. I was going to propose a toast for absent friends, actually, with that. What I'd really like to say is, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being a wonderful audience for me. You really have been great. I've enjoyed myself tonight. And I'll tell you what, you let me know where you work, and I'll come and watch you sometime. Thank you. <laughs> Really, a quick, uh, quick exit on and off. That was to take me bow. Because right now we, we try to cater for everybody's taste tonight, and we have some culture coming on. Direct from the old Vic, we have Dame Danny LaRue, <laughs> Sir Patrick Wymark, doing Othello. <laughs> By, if you'll pardon the expression, William Shakespeare. <laughs> Oh, well, we're we changing the MDs now. In you get, then. How about a round of applause for Bob Sharples, because he's going out the pit now. Well done, Bob. Thank you. And John's climbing in. You know, we have a show here at the Palladium that is currently breaking all theatre box office records, and everybody on the show was given a night off. As a Welsh lad, he said, oh, great. He said, I'll have a night off, see? But they said, oh, no, because who's going to top our bill? Because he was the obvious choice after storming them in America, and I really mean storming them. I'm absolutely here, he's just absolutely paralyzing them. So what more can I say than the two most exciting words in British show business, Tom Jones. <laughs>